All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the Brett's Groovy Chainsaw compared to uh, a makeshift saw that I did with various parts from various contributors. I can make saws. Brett's a saw maker, and that's why he is the name in Chainsaw Replication. Behold, my stuff. Welcome everybody back to my basement area. So what we have today is a delivery from Brett's Groovy Chainsaws. That's my dog. If you know my videos, you know that there will be a ball throwing component to my live so that my dog can be entertained because I'm not allowed to take attention away from him for five seconds. So we're gonna open this up and see what's going on. So immediately, this thing is filled to the brim with pig peanuts, and you can see that even from where you are. There's an egg crate. And there's a few other bits in here. So uh, let's start off with the, the extra items. This one I've been really excited for. So speaking of the wolf pack, this is a Brett's Groovy Chainsaws shirt in the style of the 1998 KOS Wolf Pack look. 898.99, it was right in that zone. Um, really, really dig this, and it says Ghost Beaters for Life on it. So check that out, which is really funny. Uh, it's, it's the official shirt of, or one of the official shirts of the Ghost Beaters page. I really, really like how that came out and how that looks. So now the bar is handmade. It's not a metal bar. So, important is we're going to start with the bar. The bar is not metal, but the chainsaw is. The chain on the bar is. So, we have this piece, which is what's going to wrap and connect. We have this piece, which is where it's going to mount on the two screws and whatnot. And it's been filled with what looks like milliput on the inside here. It's very lightweight. The heaviest component is this chain, which has been glued into place, and the barbs have been sawed off, which is nice. And it, you know, down the line, if I ever get a silicone chain, I could throw one in, but I'm gonna leave it like this because it's nice. And then the paint job is just meant to show what you see in the show. Now, this is very similar to how they made the bar, the stunt bars and things like that, and the lightweight bars for Bruce in the show. So it contains all the components of Oregon, but that has been etched in, and that's, there's a piece here, there's a piece here. There's potting here, so that's not just drawn on you can see that's impressed and then these bits are actually put in so they're they're uh clamped in so the detail even the this little line which should just be a line has been etched so really really good amount of detail on this bar oh man that it doesn't even compare to mine it's a whole other level I have never seen a BGC in real life, so this is a first for me. Okay, <laughs> I'm looking at it, and I had to take a minute. Just take a minute. Oh, God in heaven. Uh, I'm just taking a minute to look at this, and I'm going to get to it in a second. All right, let's, let's break this down, because I'm going to cry. Major differences between this saw and the one that I built, uh, with various, various pieces, but let's just take a look at what we're looking at here. So, it's a Rob McLean grill, so... The lineage of this is interesting. Ash vs. the Evil Dead did not use any home lights. Ash vs. the Evil Dead used saws and components of saws from EvilDeadChainsaws.com, which is an offshoot of BookOfTheDead.ws, and it's Rob McLean's uh, sites. And his molds were used to recreate the saw for the show. They did over 20 of them in various styles and, and whatnot. I don't know what the hell that machine is outside, but Rob's saws were what was used to make the show. And I really wanted a Rob saw because a fan was the standard to achieve the look of the saw in the show. So a fan was so good, they used his molds to make the saws on the show. And that means that... <laughs> It belongs to us just a little bit more. So I wanted some real parts from Rob for my saw, and one of Rob's saws is actually in the pilot. One of the saws we see is actually Rob's 
saw. They didn't remold it and rebuild it. They just wrapped the tape around it and it was one of Rob's. And that is a little bit of what we're looking at with this particular saw. So this is a episode one Ash vs. Evil Dead saw. And that was the uh, detail likeness that I had Brett do it to. And there's some major differences between Ash vs. Evil Dead and the last time we saw the saw, which was in Army of Darkness. And we're going to go over just some of those differences, but it's very, very impressive. Um, first of all, Brett does not use airbrush. He does traditional paint. And some of the looks he's able to achieve with his traditional paint style is very impressive. From the hard to the fade, uh, an absolutely outstanding and immaculate paint job. There's no brush strokes, which is great. Uh, there is texture. And we can see texture. Which is deliberate. Um, it's also here up in the top, which is deliberate. And he has given me a two-way toggle switch up here, which is the correct toggle switch he tells me. Not that I'd fucking know, but... Uh, <laughs> the Rob Grill, uh, which I have a few of. The hanging pull tab, which is accurate to the show. I'm actually not a fan of a hanging pull tab. I like the pull tab to be functional and stuck right in there, but that's not how it appears. So he has it as it appears in the show, which is that's what Brett does. The Evil Dead 2 hole is still there because that's part of uh, the body that I had sent him. He, I had sent him this home light body. Um, it's hard to really get a look in there, but there is a horizontal handle in there, which is also accurate to the show, and you can see that slight ovular shape in the cuff, which is very similar to how Bruce did it as well. The other thing worth noting is the block, when you look in, that space is cleared out so that my hand can get in there and get to that uh, handle, which is something that Brett did for me, and because I have very wide hands, small wrists, wide hands, and so he worked that out for me. And then my favorite part here on this cuff, the cuff looks gorgeous, but the clamp is perfectly spaced. Looks great. Hand rolled, I'm sure. Uh, very different from the one that I did, which you can see is much bigger. Much bigger gap on the one that I did. Um, and just the lines are so smooth. I mean, all the way up to the front. Now, what's also cool is all the bolts on this. He researched every single bolt. He didn't use random screws. He didn't just get something similar. He tried to get the exact bolt, whether it was English, whether it was metric. He he got whatever it was supposed to be. Even down to these, you notice there's a difference between the screw that goes there and the bolt that goes on there. Bolts that are up here, the screws that are there. He did all of that research to make sure it was accurate. The muffler block, he hand builds and mounts himself. And you can even see engine pieces behind it down on the bottom there. The engine inner panel as well, uh, I sent him a Rob piece, and whether he used his own engine mold or used one of Rob's, I forget, I apologize, but you can see he gridded it up so it looks really, really gnarly. And then the sprocket and the wheel and everything are in there, and that's where the bar is going to attach it. Even look at the back here. Look at all that grime and, and dirt that's in there. So the smoothness of the paint is offset by how incredibly sexy the the grime is so it, it creates the dichotomy and it's super lightweight and because it has the side handle i can hold positions much more similar to the way ash did and so that's super light and that's very comfortable and that is very 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 impressive um and then of course we have the the bolts and the sprockets where we're going to put the bar on. So we're going to throw that on. All right, we flipped. We're going to start with the back. So first of all, level of grit that has been added, which has been deliberately added, is phenomenal. Shape of the cuff is beautifully balanced and ovular. A nice uh, uh, locking piece will slide in there very nicely. This piece of the clamp just looks fantastic. The way it sits snugly against the engine block, the engine block comes out a certain amount. That all looks great. If you compare it to mine, 
You can see mine looks like a hot mess by comparison. Now with AOD, that's fine, but look at how some of my cuff is sliding out, some of the paint is coming off. This piece is crooked, and this piece doesn't come all the way down, which is technically the way it's supposed to be, but look at the thickness in Rob McLean's edging there in his cast top, and then look at Brett's, which is a custom-made top. Look how much thinner and cleaner and more right angle those, those lines are. Um, again... With a prefab top, you get a pretty good seal. Now, I've gone in and used hot glue to simulate a look of welding, because that's accurate. Oh, you have to have some element of welding to AOD. And I've added a little bit of dust and grit and stuff to mine, but it's less deliberate. You can see it up here a little bit. It's less deliberate. You can see my engine caps. These are Christoph Engel caps. Um, and so looking at my top handle and things like that. We bring it over here to Brett's. First of all, immediately look at the sheen and the polish. The accurate wrapping of the electrical tape. And again, the grit. The grit again. The smoothness and the connection there. The subtlety in the paint job. Now notice that he's got grit too. But it's just done in a more deliberate way than I did it. Uh, even in the paint job, look at how the speckling bleeds off the blend. Uh, it doesn't look like it's been sanded. It looks like it's been dabbed. And so you end up with this very, very professional finish that most of us just aren't going to get without a whole lot of effort. Because, I mean, it's, it's super smooth to the touch. And he's just sealed this paint beautifully. And a lot of prop makers... That's the step where they miss. They just don't get the seal. And so let's go ahead and move this. And look at some profile. Look at how much that back piece comes off. Overhangs. It's completely parallel to the strip bind. And then look at how that just sits. Creates that little bit with the white background. You can see it. That bit of space, which I tried to do on mine. And when you look at mine, and again, with the prefab top, the space is good. But look how thick my uh, piece is. And then it doesn't quite come all the way back over the nut. And then look at how the top doesn't quite marry to the binding strip the way his does. So again, those are like the little details and things that that's going to be the difference between a Brett and a DIY. And at first glance, you're not going to notice any of this. You might see this and think, oh, wow, what a great AOD saw. And I would say, thank you. But if you put this next to this, you're just going to be like, put it in the trash and show me this. <laughs> because it's just not comparable at all. And again, with the uh, the scuff differencing and the layering that I do on my paint, the AOD is a little harsher. So you end up with a much different style of, of, of grime and things like that. And of course the different grill, which is more closer to ED2 and that's a, that's a Pollock grill. Uh, I did realize that I left on my old, uh, pull toggle. So I will have to replace that with a proper ED2 toggle. Um, but let's go flip it around for the front. So when you look at my front, I've got the two external bolts, but I didn't saw them down. And the prefab top fits beautifully on, on this body, but there's just that little bit of uh, space between there and there, which is fine. I actually think it's supposed to be there. Um, but you can see the way that, uh, and this these two bolts on mine are what hold on the bracket that I mount my bar on. I did Brett's original style. And then you can see I have the, the plate covering it. So when we go over to this one, though, look at that difference. So first of all, the, the bolts are all filed, which is great. And then they have these two, which actually don't do anything, um, facing forward. Now, if there could be a bracket holding the engine in there, but I don't think so. Um, but maybe. And that just looks so much cleaner than this. You know, this is a very makeshift look to it. And again, with the paint, there is that bit that you want to marry the two halves together. But by using the black the way that Brett did to match the show, it just looks nicer and cleaner. Uh, yeah, absolutely phenomenal. 
And then, like I said, there's an engine block uh, piece that's in here, but the bar, and again, this is a fabricated bar. Compare that to an actual bar that has the elements. So that bar, this bar is real. And then this bar is meant to match what was done. So this is a Christoph Angle V2 engine block. And it's my dog chewing a bone upstairs. And as you can see, there's a piece of a grill underneath that sort of makes uh, the exposed engine underneath. Uh, it looks really nice. The block has a slant to it. It comes off the back. My cuff, it doesn't sit flush against it because, again, DIY Jones. And as you can see, it only comes off a certain amount from the back. And the profile is very slim. Brett's profile is outward thicker, but off the back, it's actually probably comparable because I think I just left more meat on the back than he did. Because um, when you look at how much top is left there versus how much top is left there. But just, again, my DIY setup with other people's parts, uh, a Rob top, a, a, a real cuff, and a Christoph Angle V2 motor block. Brett's motor block still has all the elements, but it just fits so smoothly and so perfectly. It's really ridiculous. Um, all right, let's throw this on and let's do a larger... Uh, we'll end this video wearing this. I'll get my wrist cuff on and everything, and let's really see what this looks like. All right, so this is essentially what my a bed looks like when it's done. So the Kelly belt sits here, this sits here, and just check that out. Look at how beautiful that sits with this. I'm going to take the Kelly belt off because, like I said, I'm not just throwing this on. I actually don't even need the wig. I don't know why I'm wearing that. Um, look at how fucking pretty that is. Just the cuff, the glove... When you plug it into the saw and you hold that son of a bitch. And like I said, it's super light. You can do reps with it. You can do the pose with it. You can get all that going. That just looks fucking phenomenal. It's, oh man, this just feels so good. I fucking quit, man. I'm not making saws anymore. Not even just Evil Dead wise. It's probably, in all honesty, the best replica prop I think I've ever seen. I mean, if you told me this was used in production in the film, I would only balk and say it looks too nice. It should be more fucked up if it was actually used in the show. But you could tell me that this was a, a hero prop from the show, or that this was something that the production gave to Bruce Campbell, I would totally believe it. Completely believe it. And this is a bit of a unique piece, because it was made with some of my particular preferences in mind. So this is the only BGC that looks like this. It has some Rob elements, it has some Brett elements. It's a full BGC, but it's not made 100% to his specifications. He took into account some of mine. So it may not be as accurate as, say, the Jacksonville saw that is sitting in CV Studios, for example. Uh, that's probably the best saw ever made. Uh, and I think Brett agrees with that statement. But this is just... The, when you put this on this, my God. We're going to end this video because I can't even process the fact. This is the nicest fucking prop replica I've ever seen. This is just insanity. Beautiful paint job. Beautiful craftsmanship. Um, just one of the most detail-oriented prop makers out there, and yeah, you just cannot be disappointed with a BGC. It's fantastic. Thank you guys for checking out this very, very long and involved video uh, comparing the two different kinds of Evil Dead saws. If you like this kind of stuff, feel free to check out the pages. Check out uh, The Knights of Samaria on Facebook. Definitely check out the pages. Like them. Support the builders who, who make them and replicate them because they're not available for sale anywhere else. And, uh, yeah, go give Brett's Groovy Chainsaw a follow. They are, of course, listed in the description below, linked. And, of course, I'm sure, as soon as I post this, one of the first couple of comments you'll see will be from Brett. So, go give his page a follow. He also does some really cool other shit that's not prop-related. Um, uh, other kind of customizations and things like that. So, it's a great page. Go give it a follow. That's one of the pages that I subscribe to, and I don't subscribe to a lot. So, fucking gorgeous, man. Yeah. Absolute beautiful, beautiful prop. So as Brett would say, stay groovy.